Now, did they ever get to the point to where they kind of got used to the crashes and it didn't worry them so much? Never. Never, ne never, never, never. never. Uh, they didn't, and neither did my daughters either. Uh, they, uh, they did a lot of worrying. Now, over on this other wall, you got a gentleman by the name of Ohio George. Ohio George uh, from over in Dayton, Ohio, uh, was uh, a wonderful mentor uh, to me, and uh, so was Dino Don Dick, uh, Nicholson. Uh, George uh, was uh, this one of the smartest men that's ever been involved in drag racing. Uh, he was so far ahead of the rest of us there, there was no comparison, and uh, he is still a very close friend today. And actually, I'm on my way to Dayton to meet another good friend tomorrow, who is Jack Walker, who really helped my career with the Lincoln Mercury program for so many years. And uh, I'm just glad I got had the opportunity to stay in touch with these guys. Now, that's Romeo Palomides and myself, and we're at uh, US 30 Drag Strip. Uh, I ran that track. I, I wore it out uh racing there with all the stars, uh, the Messino guys and people like that that uh, we raced there for so many years. Uh, it was a wonderful place to uh, showcase Chicago. You know, you got to have long hair in that picture, Roger. Yeah, I did. I was, it was a little darker, too, then, I think. Uh, but uh, I guess that picture had to be taken uh, 35, 40 years ago. Kind of that rock star look. That rock star. <laughs> There's Gary Gablich, who was also a very good friend of mine. Uh, Bonneville who, guy, right? Bonneville guy, and then a Nitro Funny Car guy. He drove the Beat City uh, uh, Corvette, drove the Blue Flame, set the record of 622 miles an hour. Went back in the early 70s and uh, was a good pal. I lost his life in a motorcycle accident in L.A. There's another one of our lava machines uh, that uh, we ran. Mike Evagenes and uh, Craig Arfons both drove that car when I wasn't driving it. And uh, we ran uh, the two cars against each other at a lot of the Super Chevy shows back in the day. The Black & Decker helmet. Black & Decker was a wonderful sponsor. We spent four years with that company uh, promoting their industrial and uh, professional tools. And... Uh, I uh, I love the years that I had with that great company. Uh, Steve Price was the uh, guy that put us uh, together with that program with Black and Decker, and uh, still stay in touch with Steve too. Uh, he's moved on to a lot of different things, and here was a great honor when we got the Jet Dragsters approved by the uh, National Hot Rod Association. This was a cover. You can see it's a, that is an actual NASA picture that they superimposed my, my dragster on where the jets are returning to Earth after a uh, 12-year absence. Now, the jets, in case people aren't aware of it, the jets were actually outlawed and due to, pretty much to your personal lobbying, you're responsible for bringing them back. I will take credit for that. It was a great, one of the greatest accomplishments I ever had. The jets would truly have disappeared from the scene. There was only six jets in the United States that were still active. Uh, Bernie Partridge and Steve Gibbs and uh, Farmer Desmuk and uh, I, I don't even want to miss the name of uh, all the people uh, that was really instrumental and uh, of course Wally Parks listened to me when I went to him and talked to him. My first trip wasn't good. He said, no, Roger, you're not worth the risk. <laughs> and uh, I didn't give up. So that's another example. If you, if you don't give up, you got a chance to accomplish something. A plaque that says uh, uh, about a man will know when he's chosen by the gods for a life of quest. And it's sort of a saying about not giving up. What's the story behind that? Yeah, the story behind that is uh, I had a horrible crash uh, a number of years ago and beat myself up real bad. And um, I um, had some real serious injuries, and um, I was right back to racing. Uh, this wasn't a horrible crash that basically ended my career. This was an accident I had in 1982. This great doctor took care of me and got me through the, the tough part of it. I didn't tell him, but I was back driving the race car uh, 10 days later. I shouldn't have been, but I did. And um, several months later, um, uh, probably five months later, he told I went in for a kind of a final visit, and he released me and said, uh, now I guess if you're willing to take those risks again, you can go back to driving a race car again. 
and I didn't let on like I'd ever drove a car. I had missed one race. I'd been racing several times a week, every week. And uh, he said, I so I, I will tell you right now, you're released to go back to drive a race car. And I said, fine, I'm not about to tell him then that I've been driving all that time. <laughs> 